Welcome to Trinity Downtown's Lenten Video Devotion. You know, we talk a lot about how Jesus would want us to treat other people. But in this Lenten series, we're going to be looking at how Jesus treated the people in his neighborhood, because that's the perfect model for how we are to treat the people in our neighborhood, whether it's where you work, play, or live. So we pray that you'll be blessed by this series and touched by God's Word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading today from Luke chapter 7. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus, answering, said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. A certain moneylender had two debtors. One owed five hundred denarii, and the other fifty. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I suppose, for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning to the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this, that he even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. One of the things that my family loves to do is attend live theater. One of our favorite musicals is the musical Les Mis. And I'm reminded, hearing this story from Jesus' uh, account in the Gospel here, reminded of the character Jean Valjean from the story of Les Mis. If you're familiar with that story, you know that Jean Valjean is a character who starts out the, the musical uh, as a prisoner, but then a great act of love, undeserved compassion shown to him by someone else, changes his life entirely. And he spends the rest of the musical sharing that compassion with others, spends the rest of the musical taking care of others. He's a completely different person because of the love shown to him by a stranger. It's the same thing at play in today's gospel. Jesus looks at the Pharisee and says, I tell you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. Is he saying that the woman's acts of love are what caused the forgiveness? Of course not. Because in the parable that Jesus spoke, the forgiveness precedes the love. Which of the two will love him more, Jesus asked? The one who had the greater debt forgiven. Jesus points to the woman's actions as evidence of her love. Evidence of her knowing that her debt had been forgiven. Her actions don't inspire Jesus to forgive her. Jesus already forgave her because of who he is, not because of who the woman was or what she was going to do. But the forgiveness that she received, well, it changed her life. And you could see it in her actions. That's the point Jesus is trying to make with the parable, and that's the point before us today. 
So the question I want to leave us with is, what is our attitude towards the people God has put into our lives? Are we waiting for them to somehow clean up their act before we show God's love to them? Are we waiting for them to somehow show us that they deserve God's love before we share God's love with them? Or are we willing to act in compassion to all our neighbors, hoping that our acts of love can be the love that God uses to change their lives? Hoping that our acts of love can be the love that God uses to set them on a new path, much like the woman in the story, much like Jean Valjean in Les Mis. May God grant us such hearts to show love before it's deserved, and may he use that love to change people's lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and that his death for us has given us new hope and new life in you. We ask that you would let that love change our lives, let it pour forth in our actions, and let us share that love also with others, even before they deserve it, in the hopes that your love might change their lives too. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.